Now, topical ketoconazole has been hailed as being part of the so-called big three, namely finasteride, minoxidil, and ketoconazole. Traditionally, this trio of compounds has been thought to very much help prevent male pattern baldness progression. Now, topical ketoconazole in the form of uh, nizoril, which it is most commonly used, is a, a shampoo form. So its main other use is actually for uh, things like dandruff and um, seborrheic dermatitis because it reduces the greasiness of the scalp. But what about for male pattern baldness? Does it help? Does it prevent balding? Let's dive into the research. Now, this is the first uh, paper here that kind of kick-started the hype around ketoconazole for male pattern baldness. It's from 1998 and the paper actually involved two studies. The first study looked at 27 men taking ketoconazole shampoo uh, about three times a week and compared these 27 men to 12 men who took uh, normal or who used normal unmedicated shampoo and they actually found no significant difference between the two groups in terms of hair counts, suggesting ketoconazole doesn't benefit male pattern baldness. However, the second study that they did, because remember this paper actually did two studies, two mini studies, the second study looked at just eight men, four of which used topical ketoconazole only, and four of which used the uh, actually used topical minoxidil, and they found that hair density improved by 18% in the ketoconazole group and 11% in the topical minoxidil group, suggesting that ketoconazole does actually benefit male pattern baldness, does actually benefit hair regrowth, and actually benefits hair regrowth more than topical minoxidil does, which is interesting. The biggest flaw with this paper, though, is it's quite obvious. In the first study, they actually found no benefit to uh, ketoconazole on hair regrowth. And in the second study, they used such few patients. They only uh, compared four patients taking topical ketoconazole to four patients taking topical minoxidil. Whilst this kick-started the um, idea to use topical ketoconazole for male pattern baldness, it's not very convincing. This is the most robust scientific study on topical ketoconazole for androgenic alopecia, and it's from 2020. It is a systematic review, which is quite high in the evidence pyramid, and the review looked at seven studies, um, although two of them were animal and only five of them were human. The animal studies or the rat studies in this case found a significant increase in hair regrowth versus the human studies, which mainly only found an increase in actually in hair shaft diameter. Hair shaft diameter does actually decrease in androgenic alopecia or male pattern baldness. So increasing the hair diameter uh, will actually oppose the effects of male pattern baldness but there was no increase in hair density. The overall conclusion was that it is a promising adjunctive or alternative therapy in the treatment of androgenic alopecia, but that randomized controlled trials were still needed. Now, the last paper that I wanna tell you about is this study, which actually looked at 100 male pattern baldness patients. And the study put these 100 patients into four groups. Group one was a group of patients that only took oral finasteride. Group two, they took oral finasteride and topical minoxidil. Group three was topical minoxidil alone. And group four was oral finasteride and topical ketoconazole. And this study actually found that after one year of treatment in all of these four groups, that the order of effectiveness was group two, the oral finasteride and topical minoxidil group was found to have the best hair results after one year. Surprise, surprise. We know already that finasteride and uh, minoxidil are going to be a, quite a powerful combination against male pattern baldness, so this is not very surprising. Then the second most effective treatment group on hair results was the oral finasteride plus the topical ketoconazole group. And it actually, this group actually had better hair results over the oral finasteride group alone, suggesting that the topical ketoconazole could have had a, a, a benefit to these uh, patients. Specifically, the study found that there was a moderate improvement in hair uh, growth in group one, the oral finasteride group alone, in 33% of patients, whereas in 80% of patients who took the oral finasteride plus the uh, topical ketoconazole, they showed a moderate improvement. So there's quite a, a big difference between the two. You can see on this graph as well that uh, group four, our oral finasteride plus ketoconazole group, is quite close to group two there on the patient's self-assessment scores, 
where um, group two is the oral finasteride plus the topical minoxidil combination, which we know is, is going to be the best and has been found to be the best in all metrics of the study. You can see that oral finasteride plus topical ketoconazole is a close second and is quite a bit better than group one, the oral finasteride alone. So what are my conclusions from these studies? Studies so far on topical ketoconazole for hair loss suggest that it is a supplementary option, meaning it is likely to be an adjunct, you know, alongside, say, oral finasteride for patients that can't take, say, minoxidil because they get side effects. So if you're a patient who is on oral finasteride already and you want something else to boost hair regrowth and you're intolerant to topical or oral minoxidil, then utilizing a three times a week regime of Nizaril topical ketoconazole shampoo may give you that extra squeeze of hair results that you might be looking for. I do not actually see it as being part of the big three anymore. I personally, it's not part of my big three in terms of the treatment of my patients. By itself, I don't think it's going to make a big transformation to your hair. But as I said, it can be used alongside other agents to get out a little bit more regrowth. As usual, I like to put different compounds on my subjective usefulness scale, and I am treating it as if it is used on its own. So topical ketoconazole used on its own is a two out of 10 for me on the subjective usefulness scale based on my impression of the research. Of course, this is totally subjective, and there are gonna be exceptions where some patients have no response to topical ketoconazole for their hair loss, and other patients get crazy transformations from it. But in my experience clinically and from the research studies, it is quite a minimally useful compound. It's not going to make a big difference. And that is important when deciding what you want to use in your hair loss protocol. Thank you guys for watching.